Well, hello, 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 my beautiful friends, and welcome to today's beautiful video, The New Moon in Sagittarius. I'm Tara Kinden, the Celestial Manifester, and I am a Sagittarius. So I'm very excited for today's video. And even as I go deep into all this content between the, you know, astrology and the human design, it also helps me to land and integrate this energy. So the reason I share both the astrology and the human design is that I feel so many of you are interested in learning, like, how does this show up for me energetically? How can I embody, you know, all these vibes a little bit more deeply? And when you see it in the human design chart I feel like it helps you to really like own it in the body oh yeah this is connected to this under the chakra this may activate for me in this way and you know when I deal with the uh, client work doing the trifecta which is the astrology the human design and the venus star point it's like game changing because you really get to see how this energy is going to show up like when where's my sun and how am i supposed to really shine my light you know in my work in the world so we're going to look at these elements and i'm going to try to keep this one you know short and sweet but let's see let's see how it goes so let's do the astrology first and then we're going to dive into the human design part way through. I'll put the timestamps in the bottom as well. So for those who want to skip ahead and just, you know, hop into the HD, if you already know the astrology, but I like to give you my perspective, my take from my vantage point and you take it or leave or leave it, you do your thing. So here is the beautiful Sagittarius new moon. Remember to, you know, I'm pulling this for my location. So houses are kind of irrelevant. It really is like, where is Sag in your own chart? What house is it in for you? Like my Sag house is third house. So I know this energy is going to show up in the third house kind of way for me. For you, it may be totally different. So we look down here, we see the moon in the center conjunct. This is how it looks every time we get a new moon. They're ride or die. And then you also have Venus and Mercury hanging out a little bit beyond, but it's still close enough that we're like, it's conjunct. You're feeling all this energy together and it is big. It feels expansive. It feels like I laughed. I was talking to my girlfriend, Tom, the other day. And, you know, one of the things I said with Mercury in Sag literally feels like the emoji with the like mind blown, you know, like if your minds have been on fire, if like you've been thinking about all the things and, and really big picture and, and massive expansion, if you can't sleep at night. This could be part of this energy that's coming up for you. So a really nice way to ground it, to integrate it, is to have a little notebook of, you know, your ideas book and keep it beside the bed that if you wake up in the middle of the night or you wake up at five o'clock in the morning, you flick on your light, you write like brain dump every idea, every concept, every vision into the paper, and then you might be able to go back to sleep and get a little bit more rest. Some people also just like to, you know, vox themselves or leave themselves a voice note. And that helps just move it from the head because the mind is so active and like, this is happening in my third house. So my mind is literally like oh, that emoji is, is me seriously right now. So it's a, it's very active. It's really, I think with them re riding together is this energy of, you know, transforming the divine feminine and this has been happening since october since the vsp moved in into libra i just feel like there's this massive shaking and awakening that's happened in the way the feminine wants to be expressed whether you are masculine or or feminine male female it you own both of these energies you cannot have just one and not the other so we're learning how to integrate this in a new way and i feel like we're rewriting the story you know about who do i believe i am in my feminine energy you know, before I felt very heavy in my masculine energy. And now I feel like it's coming into more balance for me. And I'm rewriting the story of I need to push and work harder. Like I can make it easier and it doesn't need to be so not fun. You know, I'm adding way more fun and just thinking about ways for me, how this energy could be showing up. And maybe for you, it's the same thing. And that maybe today is that day you give yourself the permission to finally let go of, I mean, Scorpio season took us into the depths of the depths. Like we were in the muck and the yuck and we felt like we were literally living in the swamp, you know, and then all this Pisces energy. So we've got like Scorpio energy, Pisces energy. We literally, some of us felt like we were drowning. It was so wet, so wild and not in the, 
not in the um, water slide fun kind of way. It was not cool. And now we're emerging. Now we're drying off. Now we're feeling a little bit more liberated and excited. And just the other thing that this beautiful new moon is making a nice trine to Jupiter, right? Jupiter's still down here in Pisces. So he's expanding on this story that we're, we're sharing or emerging about ourselves. But just before this new moon, you know, the moon was in Scorpio. So there was this element of the last clearing, the last cleansing, the last releasing. This Jupiter has gone through a 12 year journey and he's the last couple of degrees of Pisces asking us to clean up, clear up, be done with the last 12 years. Like, what have we learned? How have we grown? Let's celebrate how far we've come because I can assure you, you're not the same person you were 12 years ago and you are completely different. Your energy is different. Your vibe is different. You, you probably look completely different. Like all of the things Jupiter is going to move into um, Aries within the next little while. And that he's already been there. We felt like we got to experience what that was like, but it is going to initiate a new 12 year cycle for us. Jupiter spends a year in each sign and it goes through for 12 years, right? Cause there are all the signs. So anyways, it's like, how are you going to experience this? What's the new thing you're putting your energy into the creative project you know the the new life you're building right now what's your next 12 year cycle going to look like cuz you are basically programming it right now you have the ability to program it so new moon new intentions new ideas but brand new cycles coming through right very motivating very exciting and remember jupiter rules sag so it's like we are going back we are going big, we are going wild. And it is, it's, it's really going to be exciting. You know, I've heard that the energy for 2023 is going to be intense and it's going to be more intense than 2020. So, you know, you take that and you decide what that's going to look like for you. But I think if we keep our heads right, if we keep our minds right, if we are playing in more expansion than contraction. I think we're going to have a really fun time and it's going to be exciting and different and, you know, all the things. So now let me go to the HD and just share with you what, you know, we're looking at as far as the energy is related to the human design. So in this particular chart, this person is like a pure manifesting generator. So if you feel like you're on fast forward, it, it is true. I have a girlfriend who is an MG and she is like all over the place because the energy is hot. The energy is exciting and the energy is fast and furious. It's coming through quick, right? So when we look here, we look to see we've got the sun. This is where, you know, you're meant to shine your light in the world. This is the earth where you're meant to be grounded. North node where you're headed in this lifetime. South node's where you've been, your experiences, your moon is your emotional set point, how you feel energetically, how you share those feelings. Your Mercury is about how you communicate. Venus is literally your attractor factor, okay? And then you got Mars, how you take action. Jupiter is what's expanding, good or bad, you decide. And then we have Saturn, he's the boss. He's kind of like ruling us helping keep us organized, structured, and all the things that some of us fight to the bitter end, but it's necessary. It's the necessary evil. And then we have Uranus. This is the rogue entrepreneur who likes to do things a little crazy, shake things up, as we least expect what he's up to. Um, but if we can learn to play in that, it's always shaking us up to go forward and move us more towards where we're supposed to be, it's easier to work with him. Neptune, higher consciousness, higher mind, you know, um, multi-dimensional thinking. And Pluto is the god of the underworld, transformation, death, rebirth, what we're transforming constantly. So remember, this is just a snapshot of this new moon. And that snapshot being, this is happening, you know, for the couple of hours that's going on. And we're going to feel this intensely before and intensely after a couple days, a couple days after. But this, some of this sits with us for a little while. So here we go. 
The sun sits in gate 34. Gate 34 runs off the sacral center, okay? So like that gut instinct, that power. This is literally the gate of power. And what's awesome is the sun and moon are hanging out here together. Sun and moon are like, I need to go into my internal power. Where do I want to place my energy? Where do I want to initiate something new? And where do I want to be like, boom, you know, in my life and showing up way more powerfully? This is for you to own that power. So if you haven't been owning your personal power, this is your time, okay? I honestly laughed out loud when I saw, oh, the earth is in gate 20, my favorite gate, patience. I jokingly said, like, I have my favorite card deck, which I will pull, you know, a couple cards at the end. But there's two cards that I absolutely hate in there, and they are patience and timing. I literally want to burn them, set them on fire, and just be done with them. It's not possible. And of course, today, patience. When you're grounded in your patience, okay, you're trusting your intuition, you're getting ready, you're preparing the stage, you're doing the work. And this doesn't mean external work. This is like internal work. You're focusing on your mindset. You're being very aware of how you're, you're thinking about the potentialities of where you're going to head for the next 12 years or, you know, where are you going to start off this new cycle for yourself? You're going deep into that and you're having the patience Then you're trusting in your intuition that you will know what to do, when to do it, when the timing is right. Timing and patience, my friend. Be grounded in your timing and your patience. And this is an internal game. This is a totally internal game. Your sacral is going to speak to the throat and it's just going to be like, and you know, let's go. Okay. That's how it's going to feel. Now, North know where we're going is in gate two. This is running off the G, which is your heart chakra. And heart chakra is ruled by Venus, right? So that heart chakra is saying, can you lean back and feel a big universal hug coming and supporting you to say, hey, we've got your back. Go do your thing. And don't worry about how it's all going to work out. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about the people. Just know it's going to be good. This is a massive challenge for most people. But if you can believe it, if you can feel it, if you can just let it be what it is, continue to do the work and trust in yourself, trust in your capabilities, it will come to fruition. It can't not. It can't not. Now, South Node, where we've been, you all know this. You have a big pull in your hearts. You know you have this deep burning desire to, to step into something big, to step into something bold. And the truth of the gate one purpose is literally this, you being you authentically, which means doing you at all costs is your greatest gift to the world. Because when we look at your human design, your blueprint doesn't get reprinted or like reissued for 25,000 years. You will be long gone, my friend. And if you don't express all of the energy that's in your chart, if you don't show up fully, if you don't understand how to be in your magnetism, the unfortunate part is the world will never have experienced your beautiful frequency, your beautiful energy. And that is just an injustice. It's it's really sad and it happens to a lot of people. So let yourself really be in like, oh, how do I want to feel in my life? How do I want to show up? How do I want to be around other people and let yourself be all of it boldly, you know, go boldly where no one has gone before. Now, moon we've talked about is also in gate 34, the gate of power. You are feeling so deeply this pull to be in your power. There is something that is whispering to you like, it's my time. It's my time. It's go time. What are we doing? And there is this frequency being created from here, but don't leap. You don't need to leap. This is an internal game right now. You're figuring it out. You're mapping it out. You're laying the foundation. Okay. Mercury is in gate nine and so is Venus. Gate nine is the gate of convergence, right? So it is the ability. Remember we talked about the emoji, like it is the ability to really hold the energy of this big vision. Okay. Well, not only holding it, like, cause you have the ability to really see it right now. Right. But it can be overwhelming. There can be so much information that you don't know how to process it. And what you really want to be careful of is investing your energy in the wrong places. Trust yourself that, you know, where to invest your energy. Investing in your energy helps you to really calibrate to that frequency, right? Okay. I've got this big juicy idea. 
What do I need to do with it? Just let it settle, let it percolate, feel what it feels like to be in the potentiality and that will help guide where do I invest my energy so you're not burning yourself out, you're not running all over the place and this is again about self-worth, self-power, self-confidence, saying, asking for, telling people what you're doing when the time is right and not a minute before, you're just gonna know. Okay. Mars is sitting in the gate 45 here and gate 45 is about distribution. He knows that this is not just about financial resources. He knows that the intellect, your uh, information is worth as much, if not more than the resources or money you have, right? That people forget how important what they know is how valuable it is. We don't think our life experience is, is worth anything. The certification is worth more. And what he's doing is teaching us, no, 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 honey. What you know is worth more than any of that stuff. All the courses, all the certifications, like you know what you know, and that is worth millions of dollars. Do you believe that? Okay, because you get a chance to use the knowledge and your material wealth for the greatest good. And as you do that, you then teach other people how to do the same, okay? When you're living your life, doing your thing and owning your wisdom, owning your intellect, owning the information, owning your money and not being afraid of it, it teaches other people to do the same thing, okay? Now, Jupiter, Jupiter's in the gate 25, the gate of uh, the gate of the spirit, and of course, it also runs off the heart chakra. There is a deep connection here to spirit, to our intuition, to our knowing. You're probably hearing the people in my house being very like, they're laughing and having a great time. And I'm in here hustling a video because I just know that we need to get this out. And I know you need to hear this. So spirit is here to sing like, let's play. Let's have a good time. Let's expand it. Let's let it be what it is. Who cares? Let it be what it is and just know you're being guided in every single moment. You can't freak this up. You just can't, okay? You can't. Saturn is down here in the catalyst, okay? And he really, like, he wants to get things going, but he's also saying, hey, we've got to really hold on to the highest value. We've got to really honor our value, and we need to calibrate our energy to that value. So maybe it's time for you to charge more money. Maybe it's time for you to say no to things you just don't want to do because it's not worth it. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your energy. It's not valuable for you. You're you're worth more than that thing. You know what I mean? And you're not being compensated with time, energy, or what have you. So it's something for you to be aware of and investigate into, into yourself. So remember I was talking about the rogue entrepreneur? He's in gate two as well. So he is shaken up that allowing piece. And maybe he's, you know, really rocking your foundations around. Uh, can I allow, can I allow it to be what it is? Can I trust that I'm going to be taken care of? Can I trust I'm on the right track? Can I trust that universe has my back no matter what? That's Uranus is there being like, mm -hmm. how do you feel about this? How do you feel about not knowing? How do you feel about no safety net? How do you feel? <laughs> a lot of us are very uncomfortable, right? So Neptune here, he's in gate 36. This is that higher mind, higher consciousness. He's really asking us to explore, explore more, more potentials, more experiences, to feel more things. This is the emotional solar plexus. As we feel more things and it feels really good or exciting, it calibrates that. The heart calibrates it and Venus is like, yeah, baby, bring it on. More of that, please. Mm -hmm. That was really awesome. <laughs> so go explore, have fun, hold the biggest vision for yourself that you possibly can. And as you're holding this big vision, get the juicy feels, get excited, feel buoyant, feel light, feel pleasure, feel fun and go for it. Go for all of it. Now, Pluto, this is where we could have some transformation, some rebirth, all the things. He's in gate 60, which is the gate of conservation. And it's about us learning how to really find the blessings in transformation. Because, you know, transformation is not always that comfortable. Okay. It, he's saying to us here, like, this is the God of the underworld. Okay. Just so we're clear. He's like, focus on what's working. Forget about what's not. But if you want to keep holding on to what's not working, 
might be taking you into the underworld. And, you know, not in the creepiest way, but in the way like, ooh, this is not going to be fun. So I know I said I was going to try to keep this to 20 minutes, which clearly I just should not even say because, you know, I'm a talker. I'm not even Italian when I'm a talker. And I use my hands. So there you go. That in a nutshell, my friends, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, that's it. But you will be under pressure today because you can see here, you got an open root, open head. While this is all happening, you're just like super open and receptive. You're open to all the emotions. You're open to all the intuition, all, all the fear potentially too. Like, ooh, uh, don't let it be fearful. Let it be fun. Let it be intuitive. Let it be like, ooh, yeah, baby. Bring on the most juicy visions, the most juicy possibilities, the most juicy potentials so that you can then figure out what to do with them. Okay. So let's just pull a couple cards before I set you free and see what's what in the world today. Balance. Balancing that internal and external world. You know, knowing that you can take care of your, in oh my God. Friends, what did I say? One of the cards I like to burn, patience, patience. So back to the gate 20, patience. Patience, patience. trust your intuition and know, you'll know what to do when the timing is right. And beginnings, this is the third time today I've pulled this card and I can't say this more. We're up for like beautiful, big new beginnings. Ah, they're on the horizon. It's here. It's magic. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Welcome to Sag season and happy new moon to all of you. So much love to you. Thank you for being here. And I'm just going to plug a couple things for those of you who want to go like deeper into the vibes. The DFF is available for you. And this is the divine feminine frequency. This is my Voxer chat. If you've never heard of Voxer, it's like adult walkie talkies. It is the best thing on the planet. As far as easy communication goes, I drop a little love note every day, Monday to Friday. It's under like eight minutes, seven minutes. And it's just like, here's where Venus is today. And here's where the moon is today. And this is how you may feel. This is how you may magnetize something beautiful today. So I share that in the DFF. It's 11 bucks, 11 cents. It's fabulous. I'll put the link below if you're interested in checking it out. The other thing is the Celestial Box. So for those of you who have been digging my candles, I'm going to plug my candle right now. Sag season is burning and um, they are on pre-sale for the first quarter of 2023. So you will get the Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces candles, and so much more. I'll put the link to all the options. And you can either do the Little Toe Dipper. I've now created two tiers. Little Toe Dipper is just about the, it's about the product more than anything else. But the Big Toe Dipper takes you deep. It gives you like private coaching with me and a private space for you to really expand and explore how the energy show up for you. So even when you're watching these videos, it's like you can bring it in more personally. You can really own and understand where that energy will show up for you. So those are the two beautiful offerings that I have. And then I also want to give you a gift. So I've created a lovely guide called the Divine Feminine Frequency Guide. It's like a guidebook to walk you through your Venus, where she is, what house she's in, all the things. And it's a lovely free gift that I want to give to you. So I'm going to put the link to that below as well. That was a lot. Oh. Happy freaking Wednesday. Happy new moon day, everyone. Until next time. So much love to all of you. Take care.